by to 6th, 7th and 8th grade channel. I'm your teacher Aishwarya and in this particular video we are going to be discussing the NCRT solutions for the chapter what, where, how and when. Now we have already discussed the entire chapter explanation for this particular chapter and we will be moving towards the NCRT solutions in this video. But if you are somebody who is looking for the chapter explanation, not to worry, the link for the chapter explanation is there in the description below. So you can check that video out first before you come and watch the NCRT solutions because we are just going to be discussing the important points that you need to keep in mind while writing answers. Now, NCRT solution videos are very important because here in this video, you will get an understanding of how to write answers in social sciences. Because most students struggle with understanding, ma'am, there's so much in the textbook, but what exactly should I write and how should I write it? So we will be focusing on all of these pointers right now. And you are all in sixth standard at this moment. So you're just learning these things. So I will take you through it step by step. So not to worry. Now, if you are also looking for places where you can get all the answers at one go and maybe you don't want to write it down, but rather you want to keep it in a printed format, you will be able to find it on our Baiju's website as well. So you will be able to access it. Again, the link is there in the description below. And when you click on it, it's going to take you to a website where you have all the NCRT solutions. And then all you need to do is to click on the download button for the PDF where you will be able to get this PDF where you see that all the questions that are mentioned in NCRT, you will be able to find the solutions for it in the PDF format. Now, before we get started with the NCRT questions, I request all of you to please make sure you have your notebooks and pens ready with you so that you can write down the answers as and when I discuss. And you can pause this video so that you can write it down and then go forward with the video. So it's going to be a short 5 to 10 minute video, it will not be way too long. Just going to discuss the important pointers. So without wasting any more time, let's get started. Now, the first question that we have with us is a simple match the following. Now, match the following questions are always very easy because they will give you one column one and then they will give you column two and you need to match whatever is there in column one with the appropriate options in column two. Now, let me tell you a trick. I will not say it's a trick, but a, a methodology you need to keep in mind while you approach match the following. Don't look at all of it at one go. Look at it one by one. So first and foremost, have a look at it. Okay, I have Narmada Valley with me. Now, amongst the five options, which is my best match, you will look at each of it and then you will figure out that, okay, I think that the correct answer here is option two, which is hunting and gathering. So this is the tactic you would follow when you do match the following. Because if you're going to look at all of it once and then you keep matching it, it will get a little confusing. So keeping this idea in mind, let's go at it one by one. So now when we look at Narmada Valley, we know that especially when it comes to Narmada Valley and Narmada River, along the banks of Narmada River, we know that many people settled because the soil near the rivers were very fertile and it allowed for a lot of people to be, you know, settle and live there. Now, along with that, we also saw, saw that, you know, amongst the earliest people who lived there, well, they were very skilled in with hunting and gathering, which is why you find hunter-gatherers in that particular area. Then we have Magadha, of course, right? Now, when you talk about Magadha, it's one of the largest kingdom which is now lying in the state of Bihar and it was the first big kingdom that was there. Now of course various other kingdoms did come up eventually but this was the first big kingdom that came up. Then we have Garo Hills. Now in your textbook you have mention of various different kinds of hills, right? Now you need to remember what each hill range that was mentioned is famous for. And when we talk about the Garo Hills, we know that they were famous or it was prominent because some of the earlier agricultural practices took place during the Garo Hills region. And north of Vindhyas also we saw that in the Vindhya ranges, north of that rice, which was very prominent, was cultivated at a large scale. So this is one thing to remember. Now we have Indus and its tributaries. Now when you talk about Indus and its tributaries, way back 4,000, 4,700 years ago, we saw that some of the first earliest cities that were there were settled or was, was brought up in and around this region. Which is why we see that some of the first cities flourished along the banks of the Indus region. And last but not the least, we have the Ganga Valley. And we know that a lot of cities around 2,500 years back flourished in and around the Ganga Valley region. Which is why if you see, these are the correct matches from the question that we had. Now, one thing to remember while you see the answer is how I have written it. So here, when you have A, you match it to option number two. 
So rather than just drawing a lot of arrows cross and back, you can write it in this clean manner, right? When you're writing the answer, you can write it down in this fashion so that it becomes easy for all of you. So I'm writing this down for your convenience and this would be the final answer. Easy peasy. Let's move on to the next question, which is list one major difference between manuscripts and inscriptions. Now on an exam front, so if you think about unit tests, so if you think about your final exam from this particular chapter, this is a very commonly asked question where they will ask you to differentiate between manuscripts and inscriptions. So there are four ways in which we can differentiate manuscripts and inscriptions based on its definition, based on what material they use, based on time and effort that goes into making it and the total lifespan. So when we talk about manuscripts, we know that manuscripts are basically handwritten documents. Very, very important keyword, right? Because we know that from the we know that if you look at the Latin origin, it actually means handwritten, right? And we know that the inscriptions that are there are basically, they are carved on hard surface. So we see that normally on stones, we see that they are carved, they are not written, but they use tools actually to make those inscriptions. Now, when you talk about material, again, this is very important point of difference. We see that they are written on palm leaves, on the bark of birch trees or paper. So this point is also very important. So please put a star mark here. While we know that inscriptions are made on hard surfaces like stones or metals. Yes. So whenever you have some confusion with respect to inscriptions and manuscripts, also take up their pictures. Google it online, find it on a search engine and see how it looks like. So that visually when you're able to see what they look like, these pointers become very easy for you. Yes. And we know that manuscripts were relatively easier to create because they were handwritten documents. And we know that inscriptions took a lot of time because you know that we were using tools, we were carving it on stone. So time and effort for inscription was much more. While when you look at the lifespan, that means how durable they are, how long they can survive. We know that manuscripts relatively could not survive for a longer period of time because they were destroyed either by insects due to climatic changes. So they were subject to getting destroyed and a lot of manuscripts have gotten destroyed. While inscriptions that were there were durable because they were done on stone and metal and they were inscribed, right? So we saw that they survive for a longer period of time. Now your question of course just asked you for one major difference. Now this can come for one mark, this can come for two marks, sometimes this can come for three marks also. And I have given you the answer for whether it comes for one, two, three or four marks, you will be able to write it. So when you're writing the answer, you can just mention these two pointers that inscriptions are written by hand, normally written on palm leaves, especially bark of trees such as birch, so on and so forth, while inscriptions are engraved on hard surfaces. So if you write one one point, they ask you for one major difference or so normally the definition and where they or, or on what they were made of. If you write about that, well and good, you will get one mark for this point of difference. Easy peasy. Now let's move on to the next question. So of course, here in the beginning of your textbook, they had mentioned about Rashida's question where Rashida was, you know, reading the newspaper and her eyes fell into one of the headlines 100 years ago. How? She wondered, could anybody know what happened 100 years ago? So this is the question that you need to answer. How do we know what happened many years ago? What is our way of finding about the past? So this question right here can come for two marks. Yes. And when we talk about our past, how is it that we know about our past? We know that there were various manuscripts which were made in the past. There were various inscriptions. There were many books which were written about the past, right? With the help of historians, we know that there's a lot we can learn about it. And we also know that when archaeologists, when they excavate and they find a lot of, you know, uh, objects, we see that tools and weapons are one kind of things that they normally find, which actually tells us what kinds of tools and weapons were used way back then and how it actually helped them survive. So when you talk about it, four different ways in which we are able to find out about our past is by inscriptions, by manuscripts, by tools and weapons, and by re reading books which were written about the past and that were written in the past. Yes, two things which are there. So you write all of these pointers, you will be getting two marks easily. And notice how I have written it one after the other. So this way, when you write it, your answer also looks very clean. Now moving on to the next question. Make a list of all the objects that an archaeologist may find. 
Okay, this is one part of it. What are all the objects an archaeologist would find? And next, which of these objects could be made of stone? So you have two aspects to this question. Now, first and foremost, you should have a basic understanding of what are archaeologists. And we know that they are the people who study the history with the help of evidence or objects that were left behind in the past. They excavate it and they study and understand it better. Yes, and we know that it's not that only archaeologists tell us about the past. Archaeologists and historians work hand in hand to help us out. But the question here is, what are all the objects they may find? Now, we know that the objects that they may find can include paintings, it can include sculptures, tools and weapons which were used in the pots, uh, you know, in the past. It could also include certain pots and pans, right? Maybe of certain utensils that were there, ornaments, coins, and certain buildings which were made of rock and st uh, stone and brick. But here they're also asking what objects could be made of stone. So that is the second part. So buildings, tools, weapons, ornaments are normally made of stone, right? They could be made up of stone. So these are four things that you can mention and write for this particular answer. So here your understanding of what are all the objects that an archaeologist excavate and find out is important. And specifically amongst these objects which are made of stone, you will have to write, out, write that down as well. Now this here is a, the second last question which is there, which is also a very simple question. Why do you think that ordinary men and women did not keep a record of what they did? Now in the past, of course, right, we know that there were various manuscripts and inscriptions. But way back then, we see that it's mainly about kings in the battle, right? And we also see that a lot of it talks about the kingdoms and everything. But why is it that the ordinary men and women did not keep record of what they did? Well, first and foremost, mainly the records were kept because of the, um, you know, they were kept by the kings to describe their victories and battles, to talk about how they, you know, expanded their kingdom and what they did for the community. And secondly, we know that making manuscripts and inscriptions were not easy, right? So records were mainly done by keeping inscriptions on stones. And inscribing on stone is not easy. It takes a lot of time, requires a lot of skill. Which is why it was not something ordinary men and women could do. It required a lot of craftsmen for the same. Which is why mainly, unlike in the present day, ordinary men and women did not keep any record of the past. But rather we know that records were maintained by kings regarding their battles and what they did. And mainly it was done because it was done by inscribing on stones, which was not easy. And it, it required a lot of crafted, it required craftsmen, required a lot of skill to do this. So you write these three pointers, you will be easily getting your marks simply and there's a very direct question it's a very simple question so you just need to mention the two important pointers that I have told you about now we will move on to the last question yes and this is a very simple one and it makes you think a little bit also describe at least in two ways in which you think the lives of kings would have been different from those of farmers now, we don't know how the lives of kings and farmers were, but we know it through the books that were there. And any two ways in which life would have been different. So first and foremost, we know that kings that were there, they were a rule of power, right? They had authority, which means that they had a lot of uh, absolute power, I would say, over their subjects. While farmers, on the other hand, did not have any power, right? They were not at a position of power. So we see that that is something that the farmers don't have. Now we also see where the you know kings and farmers would live. We know that kings lived in huge palaces. While farmers did not live in palaces. They had their you know small houses in which they would live in. And last but not the least we know that kings because they were at a you know position of power. They also held a lot of responsibility. Their main role that was there is to make sure that the kingdom and his subjects were protected. And in case if he wanted to expand his kingdom then he would venture into wars. So all of those decisions were made by the king. While at the end of the day, the farmer's role was to grow crops and provide food for the, you know, uh, grow crops at a large scale for the people. Yes. So with this, of course, they're just asking for any two, but you can write down the three pointers that I have mentioned, right? So first is based on how the king had absolute power, while the farmers did not have such power, how kings lived in palaces, while farmers mainly lived in their small houses. Then we know that the kings were responsible for protecting the kingdom, while farmers were responsible for growing crops. So they asked you for two, but you can write three, and if you write this, you will be able to get your marks.
So with this, if you see, in a very short span of time, we have actually discussed all the questions from the NCRT textbook. And I hope that as and when you need it, you pause this video, you wrote the answers down. And now I hope that this particular chapter has become easy for you. Now, if you are a regular subscriber of this particular channel, then you know what we do here. But if you found this particular video helpful in understanding how to write answers for social sciences, and if you had a quick revision of the chapter, then you have to hit the subscribe button. Because in Baiju 6th, 7th and 8th grade channel, we make sure that we give you quality education. And we have a timetable that we follow religiously across the week. So as you see, every day between Monday to Thursday, Wednesday, you see you have class classes at 6 p.m. followed by which on Thursdays and Fridays we take level up classes for your holistic education. So now of course with this I hope that you found this video helpful and we come to the end of this video. Thank you so much for being a part of it. If you enjoyed this let me know in the comments below and if you did like this video do not forget to hit the like button. Do not forget to subscribe to our channel. I will be seeing you all soon but up until then everybody take care lots of love and bye bye.